If you have your Bibles, turn to Matthew chapter 2 tonight. Matthew chapter 2. Several of our people out sick. Some had to go to plays to support their grandchildren. And we understand that completely. And so the crowd's a little down. But let's pray that God will bless like he did this morning. Amen. I had perfect liberty. There were so many things going wrong. The lights were blinking like strobe lights out in the hallway. I thought, well, praise God, we'll just start a rock bridge movement. I mean, I would have started a contemporary movement and have rock and roll music out there, amen? And then uh, the uh, septic system went out, but Brother Chris and Brother Armin got it back together, and then a bus wouldn't uh, crank, so we got that, I think, fixed, and um, uh, something else went wrong. Um, people, 15 people called in with the flu, amen, and so um, it was really, uh, the devil was trying to fight. And uh, we appreciate so much uh, you praying during the service. Also, we have a um, gift certificate for Derek and Faith. We didn't leave them out. They're just not here because Derek's got the flu, we think. Amen? And I noticed uh, during the song there was a proud teacher sitting on the front row. Miss Rebecca has taught uh, Nikki everything she knows about the piano. And I found out she's not going to major in music when she goes to Dalton State College. She's going to major in photography. So I said, well, bring you a camera. Amen. This is a good place to practice. And uh, follow Kaylee. She'll teach you. And so uh, all these talents God's blessing with, we ought to thank the Lord for it. Amen. Thank God for ushers in training and um, just uh, all the young people that's involved in the ministry. And I'll tell you what, the bus ministry depends upon the teenagers and the young people uh, to get up and get get out there and knock on doors, and it's a team effort, so uh, thank the Lord for that. I want to preach to, to, uh, this tonight, just a few minutes, I always want to do that, uh, and um, I want to preach on uh, what does Jesus want for Christmas? What does Jesus want for Christmas? Now, if I gave you the opportunity right now, some of you young people, what do you want for Christmas? You can stand up and just say what you'd want. Uh, what, what would you say? Anybody like to do that? Santa Claus is listening. No, I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. <clears throat> I don't use his name in the pulpit. But um, um, there's some people that love you probably listening. You could probably get what you want. If you said it in church, I know you get it. New car. No, you won't get that. Amen. But some of the most uh, favorite gifts are um, uh, Google Nest. And now they have this uh, reality games, which I'm really fearful of. 
where you put the mast on and put the sword on and actually go into the game. And the, and the, and the commercial is you live the game. Now, I don't know about you, but I ain't going to have nobody swinging no sword in my living room. Amen. Because they might be thinking I'm the game. <laughs> Woo! I'll tell you what, and I don't know what those games cost, but I know it ain't no checkerboard, uh, and I know it's not no chess game. It's a reality game, amen? And I think those uh, video uh, here I am preaching against toys, uh, that video games are dangerous enough, but now that you can get in the game, and you have these, gar- some of you men want that. I can tell the way you're looking at it, right? You, you, it's not time to pray. Look up here. Look up here, amen? Uh, headsets, wireless earbug, bug, bugs. Buds, buds. Hope you don't get wireless here. Bugs, amen. Um, smartphones for dumb people. No, smartphones. Uh, drones. Everybody wants a drone. So you can spy on your neighbor, I guess. I don't know what that's all about. I'll never forget the time Brother Jack crashed one at the couple's retreat. It was amazing, amen. Didn't get any pictures, but it sure was a good flight while it lasted, amen. All you grown up boys and girls. High-tech games, you know, computers, everybody wants a computer, um, so many things you want. Nobody wants clothes as children, you know, and, uh, and what all I want for Christmas is some more turkey and ham and, uh, you know, something to flip over a steak on a, on a green egg, amen? Uh, but there's so many things that we want, but I don't think Christmas is just what, about getting. I believe it's about giving, and by the way, Whose birthday is it anyway? Amen. I was thinking about this um, Christmas Eve service. How many of y'all coming? Raise your hand. How many of you coming? Wow, I'm not going to say a word then. Praise God, everybody's coming. I was going to have it at midnight if y'all didn't come at 5 o'clock. I heard of a church going to have a midnight service on Christmas Eve. Now I wonder if that, how many of you come to that? Not one person, amen. We let Jason preach it. But, uh, you know, it's... <laughs> God, I'm, I'll be uh, filling stockings or something by then, amen? But, um, you know, it's his birthday. And uh, I believe that we can tell what Jesus wants by what he moved these wise men from the Far East or wherever they were from. And we don't know it was just three. And they never came to the manger. So if you ever see a manger scene, I want to make sure I wasn't criticizing the beautiful decorations, if you ever see a manger scene with the wise men there, that's not biblical. But I'm not going, hey, we're not going to, we're not going to, you know, lose hair over it because I can't afford to lose any. We're not going to, you know, get mad, preach against it, bless God. I've heard people waste a whole sermon. Wise men were not at the manger. Well, who cares? They got to the house when the little boy was about three years old, named Jesus, and worshiped him. And that's biblical, and we'll see that in the verse. But I want to tell you something. By the actions and the worship and the prayers of these men, I think we can see a picture of what Jesus wants for Christmas. So I want you to give something to God. I want you to give some, one of these gifts to the Lord Jesus Christ for his Christmas. I believe, after all, if we're spiritual, if we're spiritual, which we're all trying to get more like that, Christmas is about him. Amen. And I've had people, I've had people against Christmas, even in this church. They'd boycott us for a month, and then they'd come back in a month. And uh, they found a church where the whole church is against Christmas, I guess. But um, uh, you know, I love the I love the time. And I, I believe that if we're properly uh, prioritized in our in our worship, it's a beautiful time. And it can be a beautiful time. And I don't believe we ought to get all hung up on Santa Claus or the missing secret elves that's all around the house. My wife's into that. But anyway, no. Um, and, you know, Rudolph the red-nosed reindeer had a very shiny nose. I don't believe we ought to get all wrapped up in that. Uh, when I was a kid, I mean, when I had kids at home, uh, they misinterpreted that. They thought it was Rudolph the red-nosed reindeer. He had a very runny nose, I guess because we are sick all the time. And... Um, that's how they sung it. But, you know, I don't think we ought to get hooked up on all that. I think we need to see from the night's passage just four little simple things on what Jesus wants for Christmas. Let's stand on the Word of God. I'm going to read verses 1 through 12. Now, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem 
Matthew chapter 2. Two. I probably said one. Uh, uh, now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? That's wonderful. For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes and the people together, he demanded them where Christ should be born. And they said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophets, Hallelujah, and, and, and thou Bethlehem in the land of Judah art not the least among the princes of Judah, for out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had privately called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared, the star, Numbers chapter 24, and he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go, search diligently for the young, diligently for the young child, and when you have found him, bring me word again that I may come and worship him also. He was a big liar. And they had heard the king, uh, when they had heard the king, they departed and lo, the star, the star which they saw in the east went before them till it, ca till it came and stood over where the child was, the child. Now listen to this. And when they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy and when they come into the house, when they came into the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed unto, the, unto their own country another way. You may be seated as I pray. Father, thank you for the good time. Lord, thank you for these young people that's blessed our heart. Thank you for a good song, and thank you, God, for this good, good spirit of friendship and fellowship in this church that I feel every time I walk in this place. God, I thank you that we don't have schisms and cliques and splits in this church that dampers the spirit, quenches the spirit, hinders the spirit. God, thank you for the unity, and thank you for the love, and I want to thank you, dear God, for the worship that goes on in this place. Lord, we're not as energetic as some, and we're not as loud as some, but God, I believe these folks love you with all their heart, and I thank you for their faithfulness, and I thank you, dear God, that they want to present to you some gifts, not only this Christmas, but every day of their life. And so, Lord, we thank you for giving first to us, and now, Lord, we want to give back to you. And we thank you, dear God, that this is your Christmas. This is your celebration. This is your birthday. And God, we're glad that you were born to die and you died that we might live. Thank you for salvation. Thank you for everything you do for us. Thank you for every blessing. Thank you for answered prayer. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. You know, the other day, I was um, minding my own business. The phone rung. It was James Baker. James Baker called, and he was very weak. You could hardly hear his voice. And he almost died from uh, 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 Thera flu, uh, Thera something, flu, flu medicine. Not the shot, but the Tamiflu that you take. And, I mean, he went into a coma. His kidneys shut down. His liver shut down. And he said, Preacher, I know you came up and see me, and you and Miss Connie, and I couldn't speak. And I really thought I was going to die, but I want to tell you something. During that time, I just had faith that I'd see Jesus and had such comfort. And now he's home three days a week. He's having dialysis. And he said, thank the church for praying for me because it made a difference. And pray that I get well enough to come down there and thank them personally. I believe God answers prayer, amen. And I believe this is part of, the, of what the Lord wants. He wants supplication from the heart. Look at verse 2. He said, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen the star in the east and are come to worship him. Now they were seeking the Lord. Wise men, y'all have heard this many times, still seek God. And that's been our theme all year. 
that we ought to seek the Lord with all our heart. And I believe, folks, uh, they were saying, where is, the, where is he that's born king of the Jews? They sought him because they wanted to honor him. And they honored him with three gifts, and I want to bring out one of them. One of them was frankincense. Look at that uh, word, frankincense, in verse 11. And folks, that was a perfume. In essence, it was a tree uh, would be notched, and the bark would be, uh, be gathered, and the substance which eluded from that was frankincense. It was a gum obtained from balsam. And folks, it was a perfume. It was an offering. And that, that frankincense was used in offering sacrifices, Leviticus chapter 2, verse 14 through 16. It was a fragrant incense. Uh, I love the smell of fresh wood, amen? Especially when it's under a fresh steak on a grill, amen? The other day I had some turkey and I said, what's the key? He said, pecan wood. I said, praise God, I'm going to find some of that, amen? That was delicious. But I love the fragrance, and I don't know why I always go back to food. The fragrance uh, uh, is nice, amen? But there's also a stench in God's nostrils. And that's when we pray and we do not heed the word of God. As I preached uh, Wednesday night uh, about Proverbs 28, verse 9, it says, He that turneth away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer shall be an abomination. Don't ever think that you're going to get your prayers answered if you're not faithful to church. Some people say, well, I'm praying. And I can pray just as good on the log back there on the back 40 while I'm hunting deer. But I want to tell you something, folks. There is a connection between the Word of God and prayer that's a sweet fragrance to God's nostrils. And I want to tell you something. If you do not pray with obedience to God's Word, fervently the fragrance of dependence, the fragrance of, um, of, um, of total submission and the fragrance of, Lord, I'm praying this prayer, but make me a part of the answer. And the fragrance of, most important of all, when you pray, it's for His glory. I believe these kings of Orient art, uh, they were seeking God and asking God for directions to Him because they wanted to worship Him. And they wanted to honor him. They were truly wise men. Say amen. And so first of all, there ought to be supplication from the heart. By the way, Revelation chapter 5, Revelation chapter 5, um, in verse 3, the Bible says this, uh, just for your information. It says in Revelation 5, 3, it says, And no man in heaven nor in earth, neither under earth, was able to open the book, neither was look, look upon it. And folks, what this is saying is, is that uh, they were looking for the title deed to be opened up, but then uh, they start worshiping the king. And look at verse 8. The Bible says, And when he had taken the book, and the four beasts and the four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, a fragrance, frankincense, which are the prayers of the saints. Now, folks, I don't understand that all. But I know this, all the prayers are being bottled up in heaven and they're going to be released in heaven as a fragrance if they were prayed for the glory of God and for his adoration. Number two, I believe that all that the Lord wants is not only uh, a uh, supplication uh, from the heart, but I believe he wants a song with an attitude of praise. Um, verse 10 of our, of our text we see it says, and when they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. They left Herod because Herod wanted to kill Jesus because he thought he was the only king. He thought he was a god. Matter of fact, he killed uh, some of his family members because he was jealous over them. He killed two wives, historians say. You don't want to be married to that joker. And um, he, he was a murderer and just uh, vicious because he was so insecure and Herod was mad. He was, a, he, was, he was not only mean, but he was mental. He was mad, like the North Korean uh, dictator, I guess. And, and uh, they, didn't, they didn't go back to report to him. But they followed a star, and they found about that star in uh, Numbers chapter 24, I believe it's verse 17. And they followed that star to the house. 
And they knew that in that house was the toddler, Jesus. A small boy, and I've been, I went up to uh, Highland Park, and you know, it's a, such a shame that place don't even exist anymore. I mean, think about it just for a second. I mean, you're, somebody says you're one generation from just total uh, liberation and, and, uh, and idolatry and whatever, but I want to tell you something, that church don't even exist. And, but I went up there, and it was full house, and all these kings were going down there, and I'll never forget the picture. And, uh, and it, it's so biblical that here's a little boy on top of a, a stool in a carpenter shop, uh, maybe a carpenter's room, maybe it was a little slant to uh, uh, shanty on the side of the little house, and all those great kings were so decked out with all the purple and the, the, the long robes, and I mean, they came down with beautiful music and the orchestras playing and 50-voice choirs singing. I mean, that was a heyday of Highland Park. And they bowed before the little boy standing on that little stool in the carpenter shop. I believe that's probably a biblical picture. He wasn't in the manger when they finally got there. But I want to tell you what their results, the results of that was. They worshiped. They praised him. They were joyful and glad. Why is it we can't be joyful and glad in our hearts that he is our king? He is our Lord. He is our Savior. He has sustained us. We ought to rejoice in the Lord when we're in this place. I'm not trying to pipe up anything, but I'm sure not trying to damper anything. I believe there ought to be joy in our soul when we sing a song, Brother Randy. I believe there ought to be a joy in our soul. And sometimes, and I, I want to be careful here, but I've been on TV, pro, uh, seen TV pros where the choir's talking during prayer thinking that nobody's saying, the whole world's seeing you talk during the prayer. A ladies fixing their makeup and their hair during the prayer. And they're about to go sing a, a, a good one in a minute. So all of y'all going to put up your combs and your brushes in the choir because we're on TV. Amen? God bless you out there in TV land. But I want to say this, listen, listen. We ought to be praying, and we ought to be rejoicing, and we ought to be singing, whether we're on the camera or not on the camera. Say amen. Because he's looking, and he knows. Amen. And folks, it's scriptural praise. They knew who he was. Folks, when you know who he is, it brings joy to your soul. Look at verse 5. Verse 5. Don't you love the scripture? And they said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, and thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art not the least among the princes of Judah, for out of thee shall come a governor and shall rule my people Israel. And so I want to tell you something. These wise men were wise because they sought God scripturally. But they weren't dead, and they weren't so formal that they couldn't rejoice when they finally found him. Folks, I'm going to tell you what. We're not here to find a good message tonight. We're not here to find a good feeling tonight. We're not here to find our better self as Joel Osteen preaches, we're here to find God, say amen. We ought to be blessed. We ought to be rejoicing. And sometimes our joy comes out in tears, say amen right there, Miss Rose White. Nikki said, I wish you would stop crying, Mama, when I'm playing this piano. She's crying to deliver. I don't know how she saw the card she was delivering. She was crying so much because her daughter did something for God. Now, now, now Nikki will never play in church again. I'm just embarrassing the stuff inside of her. But that's, that's joy. That's better than a three-pointer. That's better than being a cheerleader. That's better than <clears throat> making straight A's. Close to it, though, but it, straight A's, amen. Folks, they knew who he was, wise men, Worship out of knowledge. And your prayers are abomination if you do not adhere and love God's word. Matter of fact, your prayers are a mist. And you'll consume it upon your lust. Christ wants us to know him. God, Christ wants us to claim his promises. But I want to tell you something, friend. Christ wants us to enjoy his presence for Christmas. I'll tell you something. If you're going to heaven... It ought to be something to be rejoicing about. And it ought to be something to be faithful about. And folks, we ought to live by faith and give back to what God's given us, his life. Praise is a fragrance of obedience to God's word. It's seeing God through the word. Amen? 
So in essence, preachers, let me just say this when y'all preach on your little 10-minute message. Preaching is not Ted Mack amateur hour for you to impress somebody. It's an act of worship. So you got to have your heart right before you try to preach. But you got to have your motive right. Because some people, they preach for the applause of earth instead of the applause of heaven. And they compromise to get all the applause coming their way from all the liberals. They try to please the Democrats and the Republicans in the church. God help you, you'll never do that. Because folks, I want to tell you something. In heaven, there is no Democrats and Republicans. They're born again saints. And folks, we need to realize this. We need to ring the bells, let the whole world know. We need to praise him. We need to rejoice because of one fact. We know God. And we found him. We find him in the scriptures. We find him in the offertory. Amen. We find him in the choir special. Some of you choir members ought to lose your composure once in a while. I'm not saying flip over the front rail and shout and jump all about. That's the hokey pokey, amen, or whatever. Don't, don't do that. But I'm talking about once in a while, it just get, you just get consumed with the message and all of a sudden a big old grin comes on your face. Say amen. I mean, you grin like a possum. The other day, me and Jason, we had to, uh, we had to put a possum to rest. It was... It was still in Casey's food, and he wouldn't. He wouldn't shoot. He don't. He don't shoot anything living. I said, "This thing, it don't deserve to live. It's going to not only eat Casey's dog food. The next thing it's going to do is eat Casey." I said, "I'm executing it. Give me your rifle." <laughs> we got him in a trap. I pulled a trigger. Praise God! I was rejoicing over that possum. Tried to bring it down to Brother Randy's, and he wouldn't take it to eat. <laughs> only kidding, brother. But I want to tell you something. We ought to not grin like a possum. We ought to grin like a Christian. <laughs> Amen. It takes less muscles to smile than it does frown. And some of you are wearing your face out. I mean, you ought to, you ought to, you ought to, you ought to get up here and preach about 30 minutes and see some of the looks I, I get. And folks, I don't think we ought to be, you know, smiling all the time. But I believe, folks, we ought to be rejoicing in our heart that we're saved. We found him. We know him. Folks, just, just think about this for a second. It's not New Year's Eve, but uh, we ought to get a vision of who God is. And I'm just going to go ahead and let it out of the back. Our theme for 2000, uh, 2020 is, and I thought about 2020 vision, is a greater vision in 2020. Number one, a greater vision of the Lord. That's number one. And then a greater vision of the lost. In that order. Isaiah chapter 6, in the year King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord high and lifted up. And folks, I want to tell you something. Whether you know it or not, your face, your reactions, your enthusiasm, your joy shows who you really believe in. The only time you're joyful is when you get a raise. Your, your God is money. If the only time you're joyful is when your kids behave, your God's your children. Folks, from the time you ought to be joyful and praise God and have real true worship, it's when you know God is God and there's nobody like him. And he'll never let you down. And he loves you. Number three, there ought to be the sacrifice of first fruits. The wise men gave not only costly gifts, they gave the most precious gift their time, their talents their intellectual ability. They studied the Word of God and found out they had to go find this Messiah. And the offering they gave, not only besides, not only frankincense, but they gave gold. Gold, the most valuable metal on this earth. And they gave their first fruits. Gold represents an offering that's given to a king. And folks, I believe with all my heart as Proverbs chapter 3, let's turn there, and verse 9 says, this is how we ought to give. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9, honor the Lord with thy substance. I want to tell you something. You might not realize this, and you ushers in training, listen to me very closely. 
very closely. You ushers in turn. Okay, I got a smile. The offering's an act of worship. The offering's an act of worship. You're giving back time minute your life in money. God gave you 40 hours. You're giving that 40 hours back, or you're giving one tenth of it. You're giving four hours back to Him. Offerings are should be thy substance. But listen to this. And with the first fruits of all thine increase. I want to tell you what the Lord wants for Christmas. Not the leftovers. Not the leftovers. Well, if I can get out of Walmart, I'll come to church, son. You just gave God the leftovers. And I hope you don't find that deal. The leftovers. Well, I guess I ought to go to church because it's Easter and it's Christmas. That's leftovers. You ought to go to church because you're alive and every day is Resurrection Sunday. Say amen. Some people show up for Christmas service and Easter service and that's it. God help you. You're tipping God. You're not trusting God. You're not even tithing to God uh, the Sundays he gives you. And Folks, I want to tell you something. I believe what the Lord deserves and wants for Christmas is your best. Your best. Your children. This one thing I do. Wise men held back nothing. Nothing. You know, we ought to separate ourselves from the world. We ought to be sacrificial, separated, sanctified Christians. We ought to give ourselves totally to him, time, talent, and treasures. And then fourthly, uh, I believe, and this goes right along with this, I believe that we need to, that the Lord wants for Christmas, Jesus wants for Christmas, a surrender to his perfect will. Look at verse 9 of Matthew chapter 2. The Bible says, And when they had heard the king, they departed, and lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was in the house, in the carpenter's house, in Joseph's house. The wise men discerned God's sign, and they just didn't discern it. They followed it. The star uh, led them by night. It went before them until they found Jesus. And where did they get that idea? Numbers 24, verse 17. Christ wants us to follow him in his will. Let me just say this real quick in closing. There's freedom in God's will. You're not free out of the will of God. You're free in God's will. And I will tell you this. One of the most precious, most peaceful, most purposeful most powerful and most protected time of your life is in the will of God. You're immortal until God's finished with you in the will of God. Out of the will of God, there is a sin unto death. You can go home early. But I want to tell you something. Until God's finished with you, in the will of God is preciously protected. All things work together. God gets the glory. He is seen. And folks, there's freedom. To know the truth, and the truth will set you free. You think about these kings of Orient art. They, tra- they traveled a long ways by camelback and by footback and um, by sandalback. And uh, they took a, it took a long time, years, to get where they were going because he was already in the house. And folks, I want to tell you this. They were coming in contact with the living Savior, and they didn't regret one minute of that trip. When you die and you face Jesus, the only times that you'll cherish in heaven is when you were in the perfect will of God. And that will of God is found day by day. Day by day. Uh, If I had a New Year's message, I I don't preach on New Year's, I let everybody else preach, but... um, If I had a New Year's message, I'd want to preach on how to know the will of God, how to enjoy the will of God, and how to have the leadership of the Holy Spirit to know the will of God. Some people are so 
distraught about knowing the will of God, they're never in it. Because it's not God's will for you to be miserable and to be uh, down and out. But day by day, Joseph was tempted. And day by day, he resisted. And the first mention of day by day is found in Genesis 39, verse 9. And it came to pass as she spake to Joseph day by day. He hearkened not. I want to tell you what the will of God is. And this is what God wants. He wants you to resist temptation day by day. He wants you to be holy unto Him, and He wants you to be dedicated to Him. He wants you to be surrendered, separated, and satisfied with Him. Second of all, I see in 2 Chronicles chapter 30, verse 21. 2 Chronicles 30, verse 21, it says, And the children of Israel that were present at Jerusalem kept the feast of the unleavened bread seven days with great gladness, and the Levites and the priests Praise the Lord day by day, singing with loud instruments unto the Lord. You know what the will of God is? Number one, to resist temptation. But the will of God is for you to worship day by day. When's the last time you worshiped on the job? When's the last time you went to the work and said, Thank God, Lord, I just want to worship you for a second because i got strength to do this i got strength to dig this ditch. i got strength enough to run this machinery. i got strength enough to, to uh, boss all these people around that don't know what they're doing because I'm the manager of this place and I'm the only one that knows what I'm doing. When's the last time? Most people drag in work, look like death warmed over. And they drag out of work. They don't work and they hate it. And folks, I want to tell you something. The Bible says day by day we ought to worship God. You ought to make your place of work a place of worship. Amen. You homeschool, it ought to be a place of worship. You go to school, it ought to be a place of worship. It's pretty hard today with how wicked the schools are, amen? All the fights and guns slinging and ungodly stuff. We ought to worship God day by day. And just to sum it all up, and I'll close with this, um, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16, we ought to, we ought to obey, Nehemiah chapter 8, 18, day by day. We ought to pray, give us this day, our day by day, our daily bread. Luke chapter 11, verse 3. These are how to know the will of God and be in the will of God. But the one that I love the most that's day by day in the scriptures is 2 Corinthians 4, 16. Would you turn there in closing? 2 Corinthians 4, 16. This is what the Lord wants for Christmas. This is it. This is not a deep message. It's very simple. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. I want you to look at it. Verse 16. For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. Every day he wants you to be renewed. What's that mean? That means to be filled with the Spirit of God. If you had one prayer request, it ought to be this. Lord, fill me with your spirit. God's will is for you to be a spirit-filled Christian, led by the will of God, worshiping the, in the will of God, uh, led by his word, sacrificing with the first fruits. But you'll never do that unless you're filled with his spirit. Let me just sum up this very simple message. The last verse of this that I read, it says, they didn't go back to Herod. They departed unto their own country another way. There's two ways on this, on this, on this earth, the flesh way and the spirit way, the scriptural way and the lust of the world way. And folks, I want to tell you what the Lord wants for Christmas. He wants you to be totally yielded to the Spirit of God, nothing between you and God, Christ wants our best. He wants our first fruits. He wants our worship. But He wants you. He wants you to be yielded to the Spirit of God. And then you'll have worship. Then you'll have joy. Then you'll have peace in the midst of the storm. Then you will have purpose. And you will have priorities. And you will have discipline. And it all depends on this last day by day in the Word of God. We're renewed day by day. That we're filled with His Spirit. And when you're filled with His Spirit, 
You can crown him Lord. You can call him Lord. You can crown him Lord. You can submit to him as Lord. And your life will be a gift to God. Our Father, thank you for the message. Use it for your glory. Thank you, dear God, for these wise men that gave their all. And Lord, I believe that you're asking us for something for Christmas. And that's to be men and ladies and boys and girls that still seek you. God, thank you for the discipline of people coming back on Sunday night and Wednesday. And Lord, thank you, dear God, that you first gave to us. And now, Lord, we just want to love you. But we can't love you in the flesh. We can't love you in the <clears throat> with lust of the flesh, pride of life. <clears throat> Lord, we must love you in the spirit. And so, Spirit of God, fall fresh on us. And God, help us to worship you when we sing and to worship you when we pray and worship you when we live day by day in obedience, following the word of God, seeking the will of God, and most important of all, through the spirit of God, seeking your face and your glory and your praise. Lord, we want to give ourselves back to you as a gift to you. Please accept our sacrifice. And please accept our praise. <clears throat> and Lord, please accept our obedience. Because Lord, I know that's what you want for Christmas. With every head bowed, every eye closed. Not a deep message, but I believe a message that will help us to walk deeply close to God. <coughs> we need to offer ourselves, as these wise men did, time, talent, and treasures, our desires, our careers, our money, back to Jesus because that's what he wants for Christmas let me say preacher I know I'm saved and that's exactly what he wants he's not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance <clears throat> the other thing they offered him was myrrh and myrrh was a uh, embalming fluid and that pointed to Calvary And so when they were worshiping the Lord they were thinking about Calvary <clears throat> somehow some way God used that to remind them that somebody had to die and that somebody was Jesus Christ for you. And have me say, Preacher, I know I'm saved. I've given my life back to God. And I know if I died today, I'd go to heaven all because of the gift of Christmas, Jesus Christ. Would you raise your hand as a happy testimony of that all over this place? How many glad you're saved? Say amen. Is there anyone that couldn't raise your hand and say, Preacher, please pray for me. I'm not saved. You'll never, listen to me, You'll never understand the birth of Christ until you're born again and have the Spirit of God to understand that He loves you and gave Himself for you. Anybody say, Preacher, I'm not saved, but I sure would like to be. Pray for me. Would you slip your hand up high for prayer if you're not saved? How many say, Preacher, I'm saved, but I just want to give more of myself to God. I want to give my talents, my time, my treasures. I want to give my family. I want, to give, I want to give my career and I want to give all that's so important and takes all my time. I want to sacrifice that to the Lord because He deserves it all. And I want you to preach or pray for me that I'll give to Jesus what He wants for Christmas. And that's myself. Totally. Would you slip your hand up for prayer all over this place? God bless you. Father, thank you for the response. And thank you, dear God, for the worship. And thank you, dear God, for the message. Help us, dear Lord, to realize what you want for Christmas, but not just what you want for Christmas, but what you want every day of our life, day by day. God, help us. Help us by the Holy Spirit and by the Word of God to be led to what you want us to do with our lives, what you want us to give. And God, what you want us to be for your glory. And we'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.